In this episode, I'll show you how to use Lightroom to take your photo booth up a notch. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I am Mark Wallace. Well, in the last episode of Exploring Photography, I showed you how to create a photo booth. In fact, I have that same photo booth. I've set it up in a different uh, place in the studio. It's right here. We've decorated it with a bunch of hats and fancy signs and made it really cheesy. And this is something that you might do at your corporate event or a birthday party or maybe even at a wedding reception. And at one of those places, what you probably want to do is not just have a photo booth, but you want to have one of these things right over here, a gigantic screen. And you can see that my face is bigger than life. And the neat thing is if I zip into the photo booth and take a picture, it's going to automatically show up on that big screen formatted and everything is going to keep playing. Now this is the cool thing about Adorama. Remember it's more than a camera store. So Adorama has these large screens and video projectors that you can purchase and use at your next wedding or corporate event. How awesome is that? Well, check this out. I'm going to go over here and we have these little signs that tell me where to go. I've got my pocket wizard plus three and I'm going to zip inside the photo booth and I'm going to take a picture right here and show you how this works. So, ah, whoops, I just took a picture too fast, but ah! Okay, so I got a couple pictures there. I'm gonna zip back over here. Now notice that on the big screen, there's my face, there's a shot. These are gonna just start uh, coming in. So there's the one I took accidentally, and then there's another one that's going in. So these are automatically rotating through. So how do we do that? How do we get these uh, formatted? Notice they're black and white. They've got a border around them. This automatically does everything. And so your party goers or your wedding reception people or whoever you're working with doesn't have to know anything. All they have to do is pick up a Pocket Wizard Plus 3, push a button, and boom! on their pictures go. Well, all of that happens in Lightroom and specifically with something called Lightroom presets. Presets in the develop module and presets in the slideshow module. Now, I know what you're asking, where the heck is Lightroom in this setup? Well, it's back here. We've hidden it inside this little panel. And that's why we have this here. It's not just a sign, but it's hiding where our laptop is. And so there's the laptop. It's right here. And this laptop is tethered to our camera as well as connected to our video projector. And so what I want to do now is jump right into Lightroom and show you how to build these presets for yourself. And you can see how awesome this will be at your next corporate event or wedding or party. All right, well now we're in Lightroom 4 and I want to walk you through the entire process from tethering to the develop module all the way to the slideshow module. So first, let's talk about this big screen behind me. So right now, it is just plugged into my uh, MacBook Pro. This could be a PC or whatever, but a secondary screen in uh, Lightroom, normally right, Lightroom will recognize that right away, but you have to turn it on. So what we'll do is we'll hop into Lightroom, we'll go to Window, and then there is a secondary display and then you have to say show and notice I have it selected to full screen as well. So when I say show, you can see that now we have uh, this gray panel and it says no photo selected. If I select a photo, then ammo, there it is up there. Now on the secondary display, you can have that be a slideshow or a loop view or all kinds of things. We're not going to get into that, but that's how you turn on your secondary display. And that's critical for doing what we want to do with the photo booth because the slideshow is going to show on the secondary display, not the primary display. That'll make more sense when we get into the slideshow module. Let's talk about tethering. Now we did, we've uh, covered tethering uh, in previous episodes on Adorama TV, so you can watch those to see how to tether in Lightroom. So I'm just going to give you a really fast uh, overview of how we've done it. So I'm going into File, Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. Now, one of the things to remember is uh, all of this was uh, the setup, the cables and everything, this Tether Pro cable from Tether Tools, how it's connected to the camera, all of that was in the last episode of Exploring Photography, so we're sort of skipping that. In the Tethered Capture settings, I want to name this session name something uh, that is um, in something that I can recognize later. So I'm not going to call it intro, that's what we used for the intro that we just did. We're going to call it um, Lightroom, so LR Tutorial. That's what we'll call that. And that is going to actually create a physical uh, folder on the hard drive. So I'm going to put that there. It's asking me where I want to put this. And so I'm putting it on my desktop inside of the photo booth uh, folder. And inside the photo booth folder, there'll be a LR tutorial folder. And then the metadata, 
So I've got my copyright information, that's all there, and then you could put in keywords if you want to. I'm going to skip that, but you can get into tethered capture a lot. The important thing for us to note is once we start tethering, we have to look at this thing right over here. It says develop settings. So by default, it's going to say none. And so let me show you uh, why this is important because later, all that formatting that we did when we took the pictures and it came in in black and white with the border and everything, the magic happened with this develop setting. So uh, we're going to first create that develop setting and then we'll enable it here. So right now we're going to leave it to none. And then just to make sure everything's working, I need a photo to work from. I'm going to go into the photo booth and I'm going to take a picture of myself. So I'm going to come back in here. And so I'm going to go, hmm. And I have a picture that is, you know, sort of, hmm, fantastic. And so here it is. Here is my actual uh, photo. And uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to move this little uh, bar right here, this uh, capture bar out of the way. Now, I'm using a photo from the photo booth because I want to have something that is distorted and has the same kind of lighting and everything. So I, if I know I need to make some adjustments, I can. So that's why I actually did that in the photo booth. And once you've done this a few times, you'll know sort of uh, what to expect. So I have my crazy um, photo there. I want to go next into the develop module and I want to create a recipe for all of the photos that come in uh, as the photo booth is being used. So I'll go to the develop module by pressing develop. Um, and then you'll see everything change and we have all of these uh, different controls. On the left hand side, one of the things that's important is we have this thing called presets. And what presets are, are recipes. They are uh, things that people have created and Adobe have, has created that are uh, really quick and easy ways to change something to black and white or sepia or something. And so you don't have to do all the adjustments on the right hand side of the screen every single time. So that's what we want to do. So for example, I have something down here under my user presets to black and white photo booth. And if I click that, notice that is changed to black and white. It's got a white border. Everything is done. And that's what we used when we threw those up on the big screen. So how does that happen? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this. So we go back to the way it was and we're going to recreate this. So what I want to do is make this black and white. By the way, if you're wondering why the colors are messed up on the screen behind me, it's because the color temperature of the screen is different than the color temperature of the lights that are on me. We couldn't match that correctly, so it's a little bit uh, off. And so um, just understand that's how that is. But we're going to work in black and white. So on the right side of the develop module, what we want to do is sort of create that look. And we're going to do some things that are, are pretty simple. So what I want to do is I want to make this black and white. So I'm going to convert that to black and white, clicking on the black and white there. I want to make this really punchy. I want to make it look like something you'd find at a, an amusement park. So the exposure, I want it to be a little bit brighter than it should be. I want to take my clarity slider up to give it a little bit more contrast. I'm going to take these, the, the blacks down just a little bit and take my contrast up. So I'm making it sort of um, really, really contrasty. So it will look like a film strip kind of thing that you would get. So I've got that. I think that looks pretty good based on the photo booth settings that I have. I need to build that border around my, um, my picture. And so to do that, we can use our post crop vignetting. So usually this is uh, used to, cr to fix problems with lenses, but I'm going to use it for something else. So if I go all the way to the right, notice I have this horrible white border. If I go to the left, it's a black border. So we're going to use this in a way that it wasn't intended. So I'm going to go all the way to the right and put that at 100% uh, of post crop vignetting on the amount, 100%. I need to get rid of this feather though. So it doesn't have this transition area here. So what I'll do is I'll take that down to zero. Now notice that's a really hard border there. Now I can take roundness and I can start making that round or less round. And notice when I make it a little bit less round, something around 80, then I have those corners that I want, those really nice uh, bent corners. Then I can take the midpoint down and voila, now I have that border that I wanted. The problem with this is you can't really get too much more creative than that. It can be either a black or a white border, but anything in between is going to show um, details underneath. It's going to have some opacity to it. So you don't have any choice of doing red or green or something. It's just white or black. So we're going to go with that white, and now we have something that looks pretty cool. We can change this roundness to give it a little bit more of a, uh, more space on there. That looks pretty good. We could do some other things here, but we're going to leave it right there for this uh, tutorial. What we want to do now is save this as a preset. 
because once we save it, it can be used over and over and over again. So on the left-hand side, we have all of these presets. And there's this plus button. I'm going to click the plus button, and it's going to ask me what the preset name is. And I'm going to call this um, new black and white photo booth. So it's something I can remember. And I can uh, tell it which settings to use. Some, sometimes you want to make a preset that you don't want to uh, use maybe the uh, post crop vignetting, but everything else. I want to use everything. So I'm going to create this. Now that I have that created, it's under these user presets here. So new black and white photo booth. So now any photo that comes in, I can just click that and it will match this look exactly. Now here is the beauty of this. Notice we have, I'm going to go back to our library module here, just so we have this here. We have this bar here, and it has this develop setting. And remember, we had it set to none. Well, I want to set that to a user preset, and I want to go to new black and white photo booth, that preset that we just created. When I click on that, any photo that comes in is now automatically going to have that preset applied. So watch this. I'm going to go back to the photo booth. So I'm running back over here to the photo booth, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to put up two fingers and be like, hey, what's up? All right, so I have, isn't it funny? You have to say crazy things in a photo booth. You can't just have a picture taken. You have to say something like, hey, what's up? Notice, there it is in Lightroom, and it is uh, already formatted. It's black and white. It's got the crazy border, and it's contrasty. Everything that we wanted is done, and it looks great. All right, we have our develop setting done. We have our tethered capture done. How do we get this to automatically play on the big screen and automatically do everything? So notice right now on the big screen, we have a gray border. We don't want that. We don't want it to be gray. We want it to be white. We want it to fit properly. So let's go over to the slideshow module. In the slideshow module, you have things. And by the way, you can hide this tethered capture uh, bar. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go over here to Tethered Capture, and I am going to hide the Tethered Capture window. So it just disappears. So we're still tethered. We still can capture. I'm just hiding that little window. So right now, we have um, these templates, and they're just like presets. They're the same thing as we had in the Develop module. So anything you do in the slideshow, you can save that for use in a later time. So if you're shooting weddings a lot, and you have a nice template with your name on that, you can use that over and over and over again, or a party, or a corporate event, whatever it is. So I teach a lot of workshops. And one of the things people want to know at workshops is, how was that photo shot? And so you notice this slideshow has uh, the EXIF data, ISO 200, 24 millimeters. It was shot at F8 at 200th of a second. So on the big screen, when I hit the slideshow, I can go on there, and I can hit play. And there it is on the big screen. And what is wrong? It's not on the big screen. Well, the reason it's not on the big screen is because over here on the right-hand side, there's this little thing that says playback screen. So you have to choose to put it on the big screen. And now, when I hit play, it's going to uh, prepare these in advance. And then you can see that we have this up there. Now we have a problem. And you can clearly see that at the very top of the screen, those numbers are chopped off. So we have to fix that. We have to be able to make sure that we can see everything. And this is why it's critical when you're creating a slideshow to be put on a television or a big screen like this, that you actually connect your laptop or computer to that screen so you can see where you're losing detail. So usually when you have a video projector, some of that information is lost because the projector is uh, projecting something a little bit outside the boundaries of the screen, which is really uh, common on a rear screen projector, which we have here. So we've got to be able to fix that. The easy way to fix that, is I'm going to stop playing this, is that you can just go in here and there is a guide and you can start shrinking things in or shrinking things out. So you can tell uh, information where to be on your slideshow. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, jump in and actually make a new preset. So what we want to do here is let's uh, start with something that is um, a default slideshow. So it's a black background. It's sort of big. We have uh, this up here and we'll have to look at it as we go. And um, so I'm going to go to the right hand side and we're going to turn things on and off. So number one, we don't want a border on this. We don't want a shadow on this. Um, we don't want an identity plate. 
We don't want that. That will show up when you start uh, showing your uh, slideshow. We don't want the ratings. We don't want any text overlays. We don't want a shadow. We don't want anything for this. Those are things you can turn on though, depending on what you want. We don't want a backdrop that's a color wash, but we do want a background color. And what background color do we want? We want white. All right, now we have a white background and you can see on this screen how things are starting to look. Do we want an intro screen? We do not for this. Do we want an ending screen? Absolutely not. Well, at a wedding reception or something, you might want an intro and ending screen to say, here are my photographs and they were shot by me and buy my stuff here and then have all the photographs and at the end have the same thing. But for this, for the photo booth, we don't want that. And this other thing that's really important here, the playback screen. Notice it's on the left-hand side. In other words, it's on the laptop screen. I don't want that. I want it to be on the big screen. When I click that, notice that the aspect ratio of my slideshow just changed. And the reason for that is the aspect ratio of this screen is not the same as this. That's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. This is a 16 by 10. And so if I do all the formatting with the playback screen on my laptop screen, when I play it on the big screen, it's not gonna work right. So make sure you choose that. Um, the other thing I, I do is have blank other screens specifically for a photo booth because you're not gonna be at your laptop. You want that to be dark so you don't have any kind of issues and you save energy, all that kind of stuff. What's the slide duration? I'm gonna say four seconds. I'm gonna have my fades down to about a half a second so those can fade right through. I'm also gonna turn random order on because we don't want all of the people at the party to see the same people over and over and over again. We wanna have, as people are in the photo booth taking pictures or at the wedding, we wanna mix things up. So I'm gonna have it at random order. I'm going to have it repeat and then I'm gonna turn off prepare previews in advance. So I want things just to show up as soon as they possibly can. And we have everything set there. So what I can do now is um, we're going to play this and we're gonna preview it to see how it looks on our big screen. So I'm looking and things look pretty good. So everything's set up, everything is good. What I would have to check there is perhaps if I didn't have my guide set up. So let's say I had this to zero pixels. So everything went to the border if I hit play you can see that, uh-oh, now we have that same issue where the top of the screen is chopped off. And so we don't want that. So that's why you really need to preview this. So I'm gonna bring that back into, oh, about, I think it was about 80, maybe a little less, 80 pixels, maybe 70. I'll preview that again. I like that, that looks pretty good. Once I have everything set up, what I'll do is I'll go over here to my template browser. I'm gonna hit the plus button I'm gonna create a brand new master and this is going to be called um, Mark's Photo Booth. So I already have a photo booth one in there and uh, I will create that. And now it's all good to go. And things are gonna work just great and it's going to repeat and everything's gonna be good. So the other thing that I need to mention is down at the very bottom, I have selected use all film strip photos. So as the photo booth is working, as soon as I take a picture, that will show up on this bottom uh, film strip here. In fact, let me show you that. So I'm gonna go run back in here. I'm gonna take another picture. So I'm back in here. I'm gonna put up, I don't know, whatever, thumbs up, and I'm gonna do this. All right, I got my picture. So when I run back, you'll see that now on the bottom, it showed up in this little film strip. Now that's important to note because if I had selected only selected photos or flagged photos, that would impact things because we want every single picture that people take to show up on our big screen. So if that's set to something else, it's not gonna use everything that comes in here. It's only gonna use the stuff that's selected and you won't have stuff automatically showing up. So now we have everything done. I will hit play. This screen is now blank. Notice that we have uh, all kinds of crazy pictures over here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip over here and just to prove that this is working live, not only am I gonna take a picture, I'm gonna get Matt, the cameraman, to come over here, and we're gonna look in this together, and we're gonna go, ah! All right, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here, and you can see that it doesn't come up immediately, because it's uh, re uh, doing everything randomly, and so just in a second here, you'll see that me and Matt actually will show up, and it's pretty cool, so um, it has to sort of go through its machinations, and there it is, there's me and Matt having all kinds of fun. And so you could see that if we had a bunch of people um, doing all kinds of stuff, it would be really, really fun. So that's how you do it. That's the uh, Lightroom setup. So remember, you have to tether, 
You have to make sure you have a develop preset that's all ready to go. Make sure you have a slideshow show preset ready to go. Make sure you view it on the big screen and everything's good. Now the power of this for wedding photographers or event photographers is that you can add text to all of your slideshows so you can advertise, which is a really big thing. And so instead of maybe having a photo booth, you can just grab some photos that you shot during the wedding, show those at a reception, and then advertise for people to purchase those photos. Or maybe at a retreat, at a church retreat or a corporate event, you could, instead of having a photo booth, you could take all the pictures that you had during that event do the same type of thing, create a slideshow, show that, and then put text on those slides and everything is great. Now, if you want more information on slideshow modules or even more information on Lightroom, let me know because we haven't done a lot of in-depth stuff in Lightroom on exploring photography. And I know there are some guys that really do Photoshop and Lightroom great. Gavin, by the way, is a master, right? He's so awesome. So uh, we'll talk to the Adorama TV team and we'll try to bring you more Lightroom stuff if it makes sense. So let us know in the comments if that's something you want. And remember, Adorama TV isn't just Mark Wallace. We've got all kinds of people. We have a whole crew that is just brilliant. I'm just one part of the show. So watch everything on Adorama TV. And don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss a single thing. And don't forget, all of the stuff that you've seen here today, the laptop, the screen, the video projector, the Pocket Wizard Plus 3, the camera, the tripod, everything, you can purchase all of that stuff right at Adorama.com. So don't forget to go and check that out to get all of your needs met. Well, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you again next time. Check this out. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab my little plus three pocket wizard, which we talked about last episode, and I'm going to run inside this photo booth right here, and I'm going to make some kind of crazy face. <laughs> okay, let's start over. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.